Look, good afternoon, everybody, from um, those of you who are in Melbourne. Uh, and a uh, pretty hard day for us. Um, but of course, we have people on from Myanmar and PNG, um, definitely from Myanmar, I hope from PNG as well. And, uh, and especially those from Myanmar, an even harder uh, time, I realise, with uh, all of the challenges you're, you're facing, um, including, of course, uh, COVID. Um, but for those who, who are in Melbourne, uh, yes, this is our first day of lo lockdown for a little while uh, and we have five days ahead and let's hope, um, let's hope that works out. I was, um, this is of course a special, a special meeting uh, to, to uh, announce our travel awards, um, which seem rather ironic <laughs> given that nobody's gone anywhere for 18 months and maybe isn't going to go anywhere fast. Um, I was speaking to Elise Wilson last night, and I suggested to her that we would we would change the name to the um, Travel Within Five Kilometres of Your Home Awards, um, and and just the look on her face said that I shouldn't even make that joke today. So I'm sorry that I that I said that, um, but uh, but yeah, it is funny. What I can say is that uh, we will of course one day um, do this travel. It's a very very important part of our our. Um, scientific research, uh, international development lives, and, and it will happen. So even if it takes, um, takes a year or more uh, to, to be able to use your travel award, uh, they, they will come in handy and, um, and we will keep that money safe in the bank. Um, look, could I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on wherever we are? Um, uh, for me in North Fitzroy, it's the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I know you all feel uh, the same way wherever um, you are joining us from, from Zoom. I've already mentioned um, those staff from not in Melbourne. Welcome to you all. Welcome to guests. I know there's some uh, guests and I'll be touching on uh, and introducing some of those as we go through the awards. So I'm going to either acknowledge or or to say a few words, and, and some are old familiar faces like Nick Crofts, uh, who, who of course built much of his career here is a big reason why we're doing uh, the sort of work we're doing. Uh, so, so welcome to you all. And as I say, I will, I will come to, um, to you as we get uh, through it. Uh, thank you to, especially to the selection panel, once again, chaired by uh, Rafi Gagisen, um, and I think I have Lisa Davidson, Caroline Homer, Shan Huang, Leanne Robinson, Jack Wallace, Anna Wilkinson, and Bruce Wines. I hope I haven't missed anyone out. Um, can I just emphasize how much trouble they go to? You know, this is not just one quick meeting to decide on who gets the uh, awards. Uh, they really do um, get lots of good applications and sweat over this. So thank you, really appreciate it. I know the awardees, and even those who miss out really appreciate the fact that, that it's gone through uh, such a rigorous process. Um, so thanks. I don't think Rafi is joining us. Um, Rafi, are you there? Because I think he's a bit unwell at the moment. Um, I'm here. Oh, great, Rafi. I hope you're feeling okay. Um, Thank you very much. I'm yeah, just th thanks much. once again. Thanks for your kind words. Big job. Thank you. Um, and so with that, we might, uh, we might get going. It is Friday afternoon, and, and despite all the toughness, even not quite Friday afternoon in, in, in Myanmar, but, uh, but certainly Friday afternoon here. Um, so we'll just try and make this as enjoyable as possible under the, under the circumstances. It is good. They're big awards. We are going to use them, and, uh, and we're going to hear a little bit about some of our donors and so on in the, in the meantime. So without further ado, I'm going to start with our uh, first award, the Dora Lush Travel Fellowship, which is uh, open to mothers of young children. It's pretty big prize uh, of $10,000 for international domestic travel. And, and that's especially, um, of course, so that, so, that, um, not, so that they can travel business class, although that might happen, um, but, but so they can take support with with them to, um, and of course their child or children, if uh, if at all possible to the meeting. So um, uh, Dora Lush is a famous name in Australia, Australian science. She 
uh, the, the PhD, sorry, the postdoc, um, I think it's PhD or postdoc, sorry if I got that, I um, can't remember which, for the NHMRC, which is one of the biggest um, uh, uh, annual awards that the NHMRC uh, gives, um, is named in Dora Lush's honour. Um, I hope we have Margaret Lush with us, uh, if um, as, uh, as Dora, as, as a relative of Dora. Dora died um, at the peak of her career, really, probably even hadn't reached the peak of her career in 1943, um, trying to make a vaccine with McFarlane Burnett, in fact, at Weehigh, for scrub typhus. And unfortunately, a lab accident got infected. She lived for a few weeks um, and, and in that time was donating blood and so on to, to further research into scrub typhus and try to make a vaccine and so on. But unfortunately, she died. She's already much celebrated. Of course, the world was robbed of, um, of all that Dora would have done had she, had she lived. But her name lives on in these awards and it's great that um, uh, uh, one of our really top awards is named after Dora Lush. So, um, no, Margaret Lush is not online. And it's my pleasure to introduce a person I've already spoken about, Dr. Elise Wilson um, from the Global Women's and Newborns Health Working Hub as the winner of, uh, of this prize. And I'm going to ask Elise to say a few words and sorry if I put you in it with, um, with no, uh, um, it's all my fault. Thank you so much, Brendan. And um, I mean, thank you to the Lush family and the selection panel and the um, Institute for, um, for this very generous award, um, which I'm very humbled to receive. Um, I, um, this, this award has sort of taken a, a new level of meaning for me, um, actually, because I mean, COVID has thrown so many challenges at us, indirect and direct. I know many of us are looking at the social, cultural and emotional ramifications of COVID. And um, for myself personally, my marriage broke down during the second lockdown last year, irretrievably. And um, and so I've found myself now as a single mother and parent. So the um, this kind of award, which um, provides an opportunity for, for me to continue doing the work that I love doing and be able to, um, I've got two young children, um, seven and three, who are, who are beautiful and I adore. And so that I can, you know, um, uses these funds to bring my mum along um, to conferences and events and or to pay for support at home so that I can still do the work that I do um, despite new challenges um, that have presented themselves and I and I just want to take the opportunity to thank thank the institute so much because I mean um, we're not always performing at our best when sometimes there's personal circumstances which are challenging and I think that um, really my managers Josh and Caroline and, and Brendan and Michelle have gone above and beyond um, with their support so yeah just to just to sort of acknowledge that we're feeling incredibly grateful to work in the institute that's so um, so supportive of um, of their staff and and uh, awards like this um, to you know to sort of tackle some of those barriers that that um, can be there when you've got you know you're parenting young children and so forth so yeah thank you so much. Of course, there's a big raucous applause and you can't hear it, uh, Elise, but big, big congratulations. And uh, it will it will come to something. I'm giving it a, uh, I think within six months, I hope I'm not being too ambitious. Gilda will look at me going, you're being too ambitious probably. But hopefully within six months, we'll all be, uh, it's only because I can just see you right there on my screen, Gilda, sorry. Um, and say, so, anyway, six to 12 months, I think we'll be traveling again. Um, the next award is, the Honourable Geoffrey Connard Travel Fellowship, open to all staff with five or 10 years experience since uh, their highest degree. It's a $2,000 award toward uh, domestic or international travel. Now, Geoffrey Connard, the late Geoffrey Connard, was our inaugural chair. So a big part of the Institute uh, starting out in the first place, a, a politician, very um, uh, renowned uh, Victorian state parliamentarian, and and we were very lucky to have people like um, uh, Jeffrey Connard start this place up. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been here in those in those early days. Uh, but it also signifies how much we value our board and our structure. You know, we we have a board, an amazing board. We always have um, of of volunteers, superstars in their own right, 
uh, from the corporate world, from the legal world, from the scientific world, from the public health world. And they give of their time. And I tell you, they really do roll their sleeves up. They actually take very significant risk. And this award, um, of course, honours Jeffrey especially, but, but also all of our, all of our board. So um, uh, it's also my pleasure to um, welcome and invite, um, invite, welcome Tim Connard, uh, Jeffrey's son, to say a few words just before I announce the winner um, about his father and his legacy. Uh, now, Tim, are you there? I can't I see. I am, Brendan. Good oh, evening. wonderful. Hand Hello. over to you. Welcome. Uh, I've been working and I've been working on Zoom this morning, so I know what buttons to push, I hope. Excellent. Um, thank you for those kind introductory words. Um, I remember Dad went to, Dad was very proud and taking his family to his retirement dinner um, when he retired as foundation chair. And um, we got a bit of a retrospective look at all of his work in the area, obviously knew his work um, as a member of the Fairfield um, Infectious Disease Hospital Board as well. Um, but um, he, a uh, couple of points about Dad. Dad loved to travel. In fact, I, I think um, adored is a better word. Um, he um, had many, many a trip overseas as part of his professional and um, personal life. And um, uh, one of our great uh, pieces of work after he passed away was what to do with the photo albums. My brother shared one with me this morning. Um, of him and mum overseas. But the award is an appropriate intersection of his interests that cut across public health, travel, and Burnett in particular. Um, and without um, stealing um, your thunder, I know there's also a resonance in dad's career as a pharmacist with the recipient of the award as well. Um, and though the current circumstances don't allow immediate travel, one thing that has always resonated in dad's voice in my head, which is you've got to have something to look forward to. Yeah. That was one of his sort of catchphrases. Travel for him was that. And I hope for the beneficiary, the awardee, if you like, of this award, that that's something that um, they'll have as well. So thanks for the opportunity to speak. Dad would be seriously chuffed in his own words. That was a, a word he loved to know that this award is still in operation and giving people the pleasure in particular of something to look forward to in these times so thanks great for the opportunity sentiment. brendan to speak thanks so much tim great sentiment and uh, i do like that and also reminded me of the of the link and, and, I, and i might ask uh, nick cross when i get to him later to talk a bit about that but you know burnett has a 30-year history but of course has a prior history that tim's just alluded to at the fairfield hospital and you know so it's sort of a con continuum when when fairfield stopped having a a research unit. Um, I think those of you who have heard Ian Gust speak to that. No, we we transitioned at that time. There's a really a, even longer history, of course, and people like Jeffrey were really skilled in helping that transition come about. I mean, they were just they were just go, you know sliding doors days, one way or the other. We either um, existed or didn't. Uh, so so it's a very very important legacy. Thank goodness. Um, for, for what he and the team did at that time. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure to announce the winner of the Honourable Jeffrey Connor Travel Fellowship is Ashley Stewart from Alcohol and Other Drugs and the Justice Health Working Group. Ashley, I hope you're on. Yes, and, and thank you, Brendan. Work. Great to see you. Congratulations. Um, similar to Elise, obviously, first and foremost, would like to thank um, the Connard family for this award and the, all of the work and effort that goes in from the Institute and the people involved in, the, in um, picking the Travel Award winners. So thanks to everyone there. Um, it's an honour to be one of the Travel Award recipients, um, and I hope that I do this award justice um, being a early career researcher, nearly finished my PhD, hopefully by the end of this year. Um, and hoping to use this money uh, to present some of the work that I've been working on. It's a bit more embedded within the Justice Health uh, arm of the AOD team, I guess, um, which is about mental health contacts um, prior to people um, entering prison in Australia, in Victoria. So there's a huge amount of mental health morbidity among people in prison, um, and it's a very under-researched area. So hoping to contribute to the literature there and be able to present this work more broadly. So thanks, Ashley. And do you have a wish list of places? Do you have somewhere in mind you'd like to go, or is that still to come? No, I do have somewhere in mind that I would like to go. I would love to go to the World Federation for Mental Health Congress that's in London next year. So hopefully that goes ahead. Um, mm. If it does, I might be able to get there. It does seem like a little bit of a stretch at the moment, but 
at the very least, maybe I'll be able to attend virtually. So. Fantastic. No, thank you so much and congratulations. Um, very, very worthy winner. And I know that's a super, super tough field. So um, it's just outstanding to win that. And um, our next award um, is our Gender Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Travel Fellowship. Um, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I'm not sure if this is the first year, but, uh, but I think it might be close to the first year, our uh, second year that we've had this. Thanks, um, thanks, Paul. COVID brain has uh, ha has got to me. This is a fantastic addition. Again, it's open to primary carers, uh, young children. In this particular case, carers of young children. Um, it's a bit different to our Dora Lust Fellowship. It's ten thousand dollars again um, for domestic or international travel. Um, and our winner is on parental leave, but I hope has joined the call. Dr. Joanne Chan from Malaria and Immunity Vaccines Working Group. Joanne, congratulations, and over to you. If she's here, if she's not here, um, I can talk for the next part, best part of forty-five minutes about Joanne's work because I know it really well. Um, and uh, but so could possibly James if he's there. James Beeson, are you there? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you just say a few words, please? Uh, Joanne's a, obviously a well-known to Burnett superstar in the Institute, but could you just say a few words about what Joanne does, why her work's so special? Yeah, sorry, I'm just um, getting my sound adjusted. Um, yeah, Jo's just had a baby, so she's on maternity leave right now, so um, trying to join these yep. meetings uh, is extra challenging when you've got a young baby. Um, yeah, look, Joe primarily works on understanding the development of immunity to malaria and using that knowledge to develop vaccines. What she's been particularly working on is this idea that you could create a vaccine that blocks the transmission of malaria to mosquitoes. So, you know, at the moment, vaccines typically focus on directly protecting the host from the infection, whether it's SARS or, oh, sorry, COVID or, you know, influenza or whatever. But this one is the idea is to generate, use a vaccine to generate an immune response that stops the infection being transmitted to mosquitoes and then stop, stops transmission in a population and thereby protects the whole population. And this would really be used in combination with a vaccine that blocks or stops people getting sick. Mm. So using that strategy, the thought is this would be a good pathway to really getting limit, um, elimination of malaria. This is very hard to get high levels of immunity um, that lead to blocking transmission just by um, vaccinating people to stop disease. So that's really the, the guts of what she's working on. She's doing some really interesting work at different levels with antibodies and immune cells. And she's also you know, branching out into using software platforms like R and linking with um, biostatisticians and bioinformaticians to try and bring all of those things together. Brilliant. Thanks so much, uh, James. And of course, Joanne is a worker. She's won quite a number of things over the years here. And, and so you would have heard some fabulous stories about her work. But uh, the whole transmission blocking vaccine thing is a fascinating ethical um, question as well as, as technical because you're vaccinating people who aren't going to get any direct benefit um, from that vaccine. And so we're all very excited about it, but uh, wondering how you know it's going to get through regulatory authorities and so on. And as James said, um, linked to uh, combined with a component that does give direct benefit, looks like the real result. But Joanne is an absolute international superstar. Congratulations. I know she'll see the recording of this. Um, and uh, I'm sorry you can't be here, but obviously understand it. And in fact, one of the very reasons you're um, eligible for, for this award. Another very competitive prize though. And, and so, um, sorry for all of those uh, who, who missed out. And the same goes for, for every other award, but it was super, super competitive. Congratulations, Joanne. Um, and now the Harold Mitchell Foundation Postgraduate Travel Fellowship. There are two ha Harold Mitchell Awards. One's a postgrad, open to a senior PhD, uh, PhD student, at least in their third year. And then I'm about to do the postdoc um, one after this. Uh, that's open to um, obviously to to postdocs, and, uh, and and Harold Mitchell is I 
I think pretty well known to a lot of people. He's not a scientist. Um, Harold Mitchell's an advertising person. In fact, he's the, he's the guy who came up with the Grim Reaper ads. Um, and, and he did very well. He made, he made a, a big fortune in his career. And he spent, and he made it early on, and he spent a lot of time and effort trying to give it away, actually, in, in much of his life to the arts and to science. He's the chair of the Florey Institute, which of neurosciences, um, very passionate contributor to every medical research institute in Australia. He gives these two awards to every institute. I think that comes to something like $150,000 to $200,000 a year, every year, just for this. Um, he's a fantastic champion of science and so many uh, things. So. Harold um, hosts an event at his place each year, COVID notwithstanding, uh, for, for the winners. And uh, I try to always go to that event. It's a great, um, fun evening. And a lot of these stories get told across the 15 or so institutes in Victoria that he gives these awards to. So um, wonderful name in science, even though he's not a scientist, been very generous to this institute. He's the person who coined Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies, and he flew up. In fact, he flew me up and, uh, and, a and Bob Carr and a few others, the foreign minister at the time, to launch Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies in PNG. He said, you can't call it the Burnett Institute anything. You've got to call it something. And, uh, and he came up with Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. So he's had a big influence on this place. It's, um, it's, I don't think Harold is online. I've just seen I should have asked if Harold or someone from the foundation is online. Probably not. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, um, and welcome the winner, Michael Tregear, HIV Prevention Working Group. Michael. Hi, Brendan. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks so much, Brendan. Thank you. And again, thanks uh, to the Howard Mitchell Foundation for this really fantastic and generous fellowship. Um, and thanks to the selection committee as well. Um, so as Brendan said, I'm a third year PhD student in the public health discipline. Uh, my research focuses on uh, the epidemiology of STIs in Australia and in, in particular, the interplay between um, HIV PrEP and behaviours and uh, STI risk. So uh, first, this fellowship will support me to present some work at some upcoming conferences, um, including the ASHEN conference later this year and the International AIDS Society conference happening online uh, in a couple of weeks. But more importantly, um, hopefully next year or maybe the year after, it will allow me to travel to some real key meetings um, overseas to progress some um, collaborative work that we've started uh, doing with some international colleagues. So in particular, we've been talking uh, with researchers from Public Health Amsterdam and with Public Health England to see if we can use um, each of our surveillance systems to do some cross-country um, sort of comparative analyses to look at the impact of PrEP rollout and different policies on HIV and SGI transmissions um, at the cross-country level. Um, so hopefully this will lead to some, you know, some larger projects, some future collaborations, also some new funding opportunities. Um, but alongside that, obviously, there's going to be a huge uh, impact on my research and my career. And as I said, hopefully um, for the Burnett, some long term international collaborations. So thanks again. Uh, thanks, Michael. And same question. Do you have any thing in mind that you want to use this seven? I should say it's seven and a half thousand dollars. So it's uh, yeah, you can go somewhere pretty good. Um, for that. So next year, early next year, we're not sure if it's going to go ahead in Spain is the IWOD conference, which is the international workshop on HIV and observational data sets, which is a closed conference. So it's much more methodological mm. and collaborative and people sort of share their um, preliminary work. Um, but then also the international AIDS conference next year in, in Canada, I mean, next year, hopefully we'll, we'll go ahead in person. And for ideally for PhD students and postdocs, if you can tack on more than one thing and especially a visit or two to labs that you, you know, you really like and respect, there's nothing like meeting people face to face. Um, yeah. So, you know, really try to stretch the budget and, and do that if you possibly can. I'm sure you know that anyway. But look, congratulations, Michael. Um, Thanks, and the Harold Mitchell Postdoc uh, Travel Fellowship, also $7,500. It's my pleasure to... Um, uh, welcome and congratulate uh, Dr. Catherine O'Flaherty from the Malaria and Infectious Diseases Epidemiology Working Group. Catherine, congratulations, and I hope you are online. Hi, Brendan. Thank you so much. 
Um, I just re like to reiterate, thank you to the selection committee um, and an even greater thank you to the Harold Mitchell Foundation for this extremely generous award. I'm very grateful to receive it. Uh, this award will allow me to present my work in malaria epidemiology um, at, in an international forum. Um, and my work specifically focuses on how immunity to malaria is associated with its epidemiology, uh, the prevalence of subclinical infection, uh, how we can use immunity to inform surveillance and also um, the uh, effectiveness of different interventions. And I'd also just like to reiterate that um, as an early career researcher, this award comes at a really pivotal time um, for me in my career. It's really important to disseminate my work um, at the international level at this stage. So I'd just like to say thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks so much, Catherine. And do you have do you have a wish list in mind? Anything top of the list? Um, I would really love to try get to the American Society of Tropical Medicine mm, and Hygiene meeting. annual meeting. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll wait and see what's possible. Yeah, great. At least it's annual. So if you miss one year, but I, I know timing is of the essence. But um, it's a great meeting. So that is one I do know. Great choice. Thanks, Catherine. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Um, and now to uh, the Pauline Speedy Biomedical Research Travel um, Fellowship, the late Pauline Speedy, who with her partner, Jenny um, Tatchell, has been such a great contributor um, to Burnett for a very long time. Paul Rathbone will be online. Paul, I don't know how long, but certainly the whole time I've been around, um, Pauline and Jenny were at everything, lending their support, obviously their dollars, um, uh, and a few years ago now, Pauline um, died and, and Jenny um, gave a fellowship, $5,000 uh, research travel fellowship open to a PhD student working in infectious diseases um, for international domestic travel um, to, to basically as another way to donate to the Burnett, but also to, to remember um, Pauline and, and, and Jenny. I don't think they had a science background, Paul, if I've got that. No, not at all, but they absolutely love the work that the Burnett does and also a number of other medical research institutes. And um, Jenny sends her apologies. She would have loved to have been here today. Um, it actually coincides pretty close to Pauline's um, passing, actually, um, mm. five years ago. So she's in Tassie with her family and sends her best wishes to everybody. Great. Thanks so much. A very uh, special award uh, to us and, and doubly special because it's someone from... Uh, Paul Gilson and my group who has won this year. I have no say in the winners um, at, at all. Otherwise, uh, they would all be from my group. But uh, no, they wouldn't. I'm kidding. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to announce that Thori uh, Jons de Deux has won this year's uh, Pauline Speedy Biomedical Research Travel uh, Fellowship. I hope Thori is online. Thori, are you there? I'm here, uh, Brendan. Not back in Iceland? No, yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> Congratulations. And, Thank you. Um, Thori is from the Malaria Violence and Drug Discovery Working Group, which is um, Paul and my group. And uh, so you've done an absolutely amazing uh, PhD and, uh, and congratulations and over to you. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, I just want to start off by saying that I'm very honored to receive these awards and I want to thank uh, both Pauline, Jani, and of course the selection committee. Uh, I realized I might not be able to travel very far, as Brendan has mentioned, uh, to use the award money. Uh, however, there are many virtual uh, malaria conferences that I'm very looking forward to attend this year, and some that I've already attended, uh, so I'm very grateful to receive these funds. Uh, as some of you might know, I'm a PhD student, as Brendan mentioned, in, in the Gilson Crab Laboratory, and I'm studying the human malaria parasite Plasmodium falciparum. So my focus is on the survival strategies of the parasite within the human red blood cell. It's this stage that causes the clinical symptoms of malaria and is therefore the perfect window for therapeutic interventions. So the red blood cell is quite nutrient poor. So the parasite itself needs to export hundreds of parasite proteins into the red blood cell to effectively transform it into a livable habitat. So you can imagine these proteins as the construction workers uh, building a home for the parasite. And without them, there is no house and the parasite is unable to thrive within the red blood cell and dies. So my work is to characterize the roles of some of these parasite construction workers 
uh, as they could provide us with ideal drug targets. So thanks again. Thanks, Tori. And do you have a wish um, top of the list place to go? Um, well, if I can, I guess I'll be in Europe next year. So maybe I could use the funds if possible after my PhD. <laughs> to come back here. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> but there is a, a Gordon Research Conference I might want to attend. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's a great choice. And as Liz has just reminded me, Dory is also a great artist. I don't know if anybody who's seen my um, Twitter page would see that they don't see me, they see a picture of me drawn by Dory and uh, a lot of um, uh, images that the Burnett uses are ones that that she has drawn so multi-talented and it's good to know you have something to fall back on when you know one year down the track that is grants don't come through um uh, which is uh, of course happens to um happens to all of us but uh, thanks story well done and um you. and i know you're a long kind of stuck a long way from home as well with the covid crisis you kind of this is a second home not a first home like for, for many of you who are here so um acknowledge that as well covid's been particularly tough um, congratulations, sorry. And the, uh, where am I up to? Now, the, the next travel award is the Jeffrey Stewardson Travel Award, open to all staff and students working in HIV, which is a lot of you. And uh, it's a $2,000 award for international travel. Jeffrey is an apology, um, but does send his congratulations. He's another really regular and generous donor. I think he was kind of an initiator of... Um, of us having a, a, a corpus so that there's something um, to, to be spent each year in, in, in this award. I mean, we, we will guarantee these awards all the time, but it's helped a lot if, uh, if you know, um, there is a bolus of cash there for, uh, uh, for interest to be used on, on the award. So it's very generous of Jeffrey, and um, unfortunately we don't get to hear from him this year, um, but we do get an awardee and uh, congratulations to Sophia Schroeder uh, from the H HIV Prevention Group, Justice Health Group, and Viral Hepatitis Working Group. Sophia, congratulations. I hope you're online. And oh, yes. thanks very right. much, Brennan. Um, you're welcome. Oh, there she is. Yeah, I feel incredibly um, humbled, honored, and slightly surprised that I won this award this year. Um, so, yeah, first and foremost, of course, thank you to the uh, Jeffrey Stewartson Foundation and to him particularly um, for extending this award and to the committee, of course, for taking the time to review my application. Um, yeah, it really, really means a lot, um, not only to support my travel, which hopefully will happen at some point, and my career, but also personally. Um, to boost morale and hopefully help me finish my PhD. My PhD looks at injecting drug use um, among gay and bi men. So I'm particularly looking to understand how social and sexual identity and drug use practices interact and how this interaction influences well-being. Um, so as a population, gay and bi men do use drugs differently than other men. Um, and they're quite intentional about it a lot of the time. Um, a lot of their drug practices enhance the formation of gay identities and um, they achieve social belonging and inclusion, but uh, many of these men also experience harms, not only from a public health perspective, um, you know, HIV acquisition, Hep C acquisition, STI acquisition and addiction um, are some of the negative public health outcomes, I guess, but people also experience harms to their self-concept. And so, yeah, ultimately I hope that the findings of my research will help to support um, gay and bi men achieve and maintain well-being um, and yeah, their, their goals, I guess, the intentional side of the drug taking without any of the negative harms, basically mitigating harmful elements of their social practices. Um, yeah, with the money that I have been awarded, I will be able to attend um, INSU this year and ASHEN as well, where I'll be presenting some of my research. Um, and I really, really, really hope to go. Well, A, I'd like to um, attend, similar to Michael, the HIV conference in Montreal next year. Yeah. 
but also really like to use some of the money to go to a conference back in Europe because yeah it'd be nice to go home at some point Yes, absolutely. And uh, so like Dory, we're very um, aware of that. Congratulations, Sophia. You've already answered the question I was going to ask you. So, And thanks for that fabulous um, description. So um, congratulations. And our next two awards are Miller Foundation Awards. Um, now, what I haven't told the selection committee is they were originally $1,000 awards. Um, they're now $2,000 uh, awards to bring them in line with the with the others. And um, the Miller Foundation, I think, I hope are really familiar to a lot of people who have been around a while, currently administered by Andrew Miller and his wife, Jean, um, but previously uh, by, by Andrew's um, brother and their family, and they share, they share it around. Um, just so happens that, that Andrew's um, brother's daughter is a good friend of mine, in fact, was in the same lab as me uh, doing honours all those years ago and, and is now in the UK and now has her own foundation, is also a generous donor. So the Millers and the extended family are just fantastic ongoing contributors to us. They're actually really big donors. So the Travel Award is just a small uh, side, but they're, they're really big donors from their foundation that they have. They love this place and, um, and really... <laughs> Our survival in tough days has had a lot to do with, with the Millers. So a very special award, and that's why I was very keen to increase the amount uh, to, to $2,000. There's a, one for international travel and one to support um, domestic uh, travel. And it's my pleasure to announce that the winner of the, um, uh, it's open to all staff and students, of the international award goes to Michael Curtis from the Alcohol and Other Drugs and Justice Health Working Groups. Michael. Hi, Brendan. Hi, everyone. Um, thank, you very, thank you very much, Brendan. Uh, thank you very much to the Miller Foundation. It's an uh, honour to get the award and um, also quite surprised to uh, hear it just uh, doubled as well. That's uh, certainly uh, some great news. Um, so this uh, travel award will support me to uh, present some of my PhD work uh, looking at the role of uh, opioid agonist treatment in promoting uh, or hopefully promoting improved outcomes for men recently released from prison in Victoria. Uh, in particular, my work's looking at the resumption of uh, injecting drug use, health service utilisation and uh, some health outcomes as well in the immediate uh, post-release period. Um, my original plan had been to use some of this funding to attend the uh, Institute Conference in Sydney later this year. So that's the work on uh, health and hepatitis in substance users conference. But uh, obviously there's going to be a little bit of change left over after that. So uh, might uh, have a little bit of a think about some uh, international options for next year as well. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the selection panel as well. I think I might have uh, forgotten to thank you. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thanks. That's fabulous. Thank you, Michael. Congratulations. Um, and the winner of the domestic travel grant for the Miller Foundation is Dr. Shelley Walker, um, also from the HIV prevention group that you heard about earlier, Justice Health and Viral Hepatitis Working Group. Shelley, congratulations. Thanks, Brendan. And yes, just like Michael, that's really exciting that it's been doubled. It means there'll be more I'll be able to do. Um, I too would obviously like to thank the Institute and the Miller Foundation the, um, and all of the, the those of you who worked hard going through all the applications. Um, I, I'm an early career researcher at the Burnett, having completed my PhD last year. And this is an opportunity for me to hopefully present the findings, some of the, the continuing work from my PhD, but also another study that I've just um, started being involved in. So in terms of my PhD, my, my study was a qualitative study about the experiences of incarceration, drug use and release from adult prisons for a group of young men. And I'm hoping to present at the Australia New Zealand Society of Criminology Conference, which interestingly, just after I got the email to say that I'd been awarded, they've decided that it will be online. So maybe yeah. it can be used for something else, um, traveling somewhere else. But um, in particular, I'm um, going to be presenting findings about um, the experience 
cases of these young men after they're released from prison um, who are on community correction orders, which is like parole, um, but for, for, for shorter sentences. And there are a whole range of really difficult requirements that um, the young men were needing to abide by, which resulted in many of them being reincarcerated. We know that for young adults um, on correction orders, they're much twice, well, around twice as likely as adults to return to prison. So I'm hoping that this work can really help inform policy and practice that um, will improve the, the supports that they receive as they return to the community. And just quickly, the other, st the other study is about um, the experiences of COVID and the restrictions on um, people who use drugs. So I'm, I'm about to bar embark on a, a qualitative study that will be um, exploring how the um, COVID and restrictions have adversely affected the social, economic and um, a whole range of experiences for people who use drugs. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Shelley, and congratulations. Sorry about the conference going online, but um, that will there will be other chances uh, to, to use it. And uh, and and really wonderful description of a very important work. Uh, no doubt, it will it will change things. That and the work of colleagues around the place. That's what needs to happen um, to to make a difference in a very intractable area. So congratulations and and thank you. Um, now, our next uh, two awards uh, are going to be bundled together. They're the Crockett Murphy Awards, uh, established in 2014 to honour the contributions of former staff members, uh, Dr Sue Crockett and, and Claire Murphy. Um, it's an annual grant of, of $2,500 up to $2,500 um, for but some of that for overseas staff to not to for, for local staff. So, but not for Australian based staff. And um, before I announce the winners, I'd like Mike Tool to tell us a little bit about who Sue and Claire, I knew uh, Claire, I didn't know Sue, um, but Mike knew both uh, much better. So Mike, if you're online, yep, could you I tell am. us a little bit? Sure. Thanks, Brendan. Um, well, I think both Sue and Claire were really cherished members of the Burnett family. I'll start with Sue. Uh, now, I met Sue uh, 56 years ago, wow. in 1965, when we both started our medical studies together at Monash. I kind of kept up with her uh, off and on, although I was overseas a lot. And, and Nick Crofts would know her well from her time at the Collingwood Community Health Centre. Um, but I started working with her again when she was the team leader of the first uh, Australian government funded HIV program. And she was revered in, in Papua New Guinea, um, along with her counterpart, who many of you would know, Dr. Clement Malau, otherwise at the time known as Dr. Condon. Um, so after that project finished, um, the, the next project uh, funded by Ozaid, um was a partnership between the Burnett Institute and um, a commercial company called ASIL. And she uh, was the project director um, for a number of years. She itched to get back into the field. So she moved to Southern China and was the team leader in a primary healthcare program funded by um, OzAid. She developed um, abdominal symptoms, um, came back to Melbourne and was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and she passed away not that long afterwards. So we have very fond memories of Sue. Uh, Claire joined us uh, somewhat later. She performed a lot of fantastic roles, including um, a project in the Pacific. Um, she managed a project in Timor-Leste uh, for Women and Children's Health that was funded by USAID. Um, but I think the work we most remember Claire for was after Cyclone Nargis, in what we called Burma at the time. And I might go back to calling it Burma, actually. Um, so Claire went out there. More than 100,000 people were killed by that cyclone and many more millions were, were displaced. And Claire established um, this fantastic um, program focused on reproductive health. For example, handing out or arranging to hand out um, menstrual support supplies 
um, and of course um, contraception and other other things. So Claire um, unfortunately developed ovarian cancer. Um, she was in remission for some time and worked with us, but finally, sadly, she passed away. So again, happy memories of, of both Claire and Sue. Thank you so much, Mike, and uh, and it's wonderful that we can remember them each year. I know the team, especially the international health team, remember them regularly, but uh, that we all get to remember them into perpetuity through this award. Um, we have a winner from Myanmar and we have a winner from PNG. Uh, firstly, I'm going to introduce our um, Crockett Murphy winner from Myanmar that I hope, um, and I'm about to hear what's going to happen uh, with the award, but it's my pleasure to congratulate uh, Tin Ma Win for, for winning this year's Crockett Murphy uh, Award from, from Myanmar. Tin Ma, are you online? Yes, yes, Brendan, yeah. Great, congratulations, and uh, over to you. Yeah, uh, good afternoon and good morning uh, from Myanmar side. Tim uh, Awin um, uh, here, uh, working in Barnett Institute Myanmar office as research and development manager. Um, I would like to thank Barnett for presenting me as one of the winners of Phuket Murphy Travel Award uh, 2021. Uh, when I considered applying, I was so happy to see that Barnett allowed online learning applications this year. Uh, as you all know, I mean, you know, the applying for the international conferences or courses would not have been possible for me due to the impact of COVID-19 globally and together with the uh, devastating impact of the Myanmar coup earlier this year. So I applied to use this award for data visualization and dashboarding courses and for attending the courses on climate change and health. Uh, as you all know, data scale is essential for the research institution like Barnett. Uh, more importantly, I think the more we become competent in data scale, uh, we can work in closer partnership with the people, uh, uh, with the staff from Barnett Nervon office who are helping us in data analysis as well as their data related matters. And also uh, integrating uh, climate change in our future project is also vital, I think. And it's also mm. a very important focus area for, for Barnett and their partners, I think. And uh, we have seen that, we also have seen the impacts of climate change on health, especially on, in developing country like us. Therefore, it is important to consider the changes in public health practices uh, to increase our health systems, uh, adaptive capacity and uh, our resilience. So I'm going to use this award to equip me with the knowledges from those online learning courses. And I'm also going to share the knowledges I gained with my BIMM colleagues. And thanks to the senior management at Barnett Nervo, uh, also the, uh, the senior um, management at Barnett Jesse, and Mark, just, and just also yeah, yeah. Um, uh, giving the opportunity and no, also- Yeah, it was Rachel. Sorry, Dulcie, could you go on mute, please? Sorry. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Tinma. That, that, congratulations. And what a wonderful uh, use of, uh, of the award under really difficult circumstances. I mean, nothing that we can say here can even begin to um, appreciate the degree of challenge that you and your family and, your, and our colleagues in Myanmar are, are going through, you know, with the added... COVID um, spike and having to deal with Delta uh, variant as, as you're doing now on top of the very, very difficult circumstance. So um, uh, congratulations and I really, really hope that, um, that this award can be of use to you in the, in the way that you've described um, and that, you know, the year ahead is a lot better than the year behind. But um, as I say, we can't underestimate the degree or overstate in fact, the degree of, of um, difficulty. So congratulations and, and to you and all of the team who, you know, the Myanmar team just go from strength to strength have been really amazing, a very important part of our present and a very important part of our future. Um, Thank so you. great to hear from you. Um, and now to uh, PNG, uh, to uh, Kaba Ola, who's uh, uh, the coordinator of uh, our pharmacy and med medical procurement on the Fleming Fund project, um, a UK aid project in, in uh, PNG. So uh, Kaba, I hope you're online and uh, congratulations to you. 
Hello, thank you. Hello. Um, I'm actually at the airport trying to travel from Goroka back to Port Mosby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we came for one of our south site visits. So I'd like to thank the selection panel, um, in particular, um, the thematic lead for the surveillance team, Deb, who pushed me to apply for the award. Um, this award will provide an opportunity to attend courses online. Um, as you may know, AMR on the One Health platform is a very new concept in PNG. And it's kind of, it's a challenge to have the attitudes of the other um, government departments to have that concept taken in. So I really appreciate this award because whatever course I attend will help me to, I think, create better dialogues mm. because of our cultural and our the, the way that PNG thinks. It will help me to communicate the ideas that BI wants me to get across and to help further the project in the country. So thank you, thank you very much. Oh, congratulations, Kaba. Thanks so much for that great description. Um, Fleming Fund is an amazing program and, and uh, ahead of its time, really, focus on antimicrobial resistance um, in, in the, you know, the wider world, low and middle income countries, not just uh, in, in developed. And, uh, you know, the UK aid is going through some tough challenges at the moment. And, um, uh, but the grant in and of itself was really ahead of its time. I think we'll see a lot more like that. Uh, and to the PNG team too, who's had their own um, challenges, especially with COVID of recent months, um, we are thinking very much of you and this growing team that we have in PNG in three uh, significant centres now in Port Moresby, although covers in, in Goroka on our way back to Port Moresby, but the, the office in Port Moresby is pretty full. Um, of course, our Kokopo head office in East New Britain and the Western province going from strength to strength uh, on the back of TB and COVID and more and more uh, projects as, as time goes on. Really very significant operation in, in PNG and I can't wait to, to get back there as kind of my, as of course, my second home as well as a special place for Burnett. So congratulations and um, once again, wonderful to remember um, uh, Sue Crockett and Claire Murphy in this way. Um, now, the next grant is new. It's the Margaret Harrison uh, Parental Leave Grant. Um, and I'm not sure if Margaret is online. Paul, do we know Margaret? Are you online? Well, if there, not... There is a Margaret online who's using an iPhone. I'm not sure if it's Margaret Harrison or not. <laughs> Probably Margaret Heller, I'd say. Probably. Uh, uh, anyway, Margaret ha Harrison has been very generous in this $5,000 award to support a staff member who identifies as a woman who is on parental leave or returning to work. And there's a, a range of, of uh, purposes that, that the funds can be used for uh, that make their, their working life and home life um, better. Uh, now, the winner uh, of this award is somebody very special to me because she's been working with me in one way or another for over 10 years, I suspect, although um, she'll be able to give me an accurate um, timeline on that and has done just phenomenal work uh, at the very highest international standard for every day of that period. And she's just published so incredibly well and just continues to, to, to do superbly um, as a mum now of two. And, uh, and it's a, and a great period in her life. And, uh, and we're you know, incredibly proud of Hayley within our group and of course, within the Institute. So um, congratulations to Hayley Bullen. I hope you are online, Hayley. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's been uh, on and off for 15 years, actually. 15, oh, God. <laughs> Um, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Margaret um, for this award. Um, it's, it means a lot to me and it's, it's going to help me a lot. Um, and also the selection committee. Um, so I work on malaria um, and at the moment I'm working on determining the mechanism of action. So how, how drugs, how anti-malarial drugs work and how they kill the parasites. Um, that's essentially the next step that we need to get these drugs along in the drug development pipeline. Um, and that's really important because at the moment, all antimalarials, there's resistance that's been developed to them. 
So we need to constantly be getting um, more and more um, drugs into this pipeline um, to sort of obviously overcome malaria. Um, so this award um, I'm going to be using to pay an extra set of hands uh, for the amount of times that I, I can't come in on very short notice because my one-year-old or three-year-old is just all of a sudden sick, which happens constantly during winter. It's happened today. It's happened most days this week. Mm. Um, so being able to have someone that can just step in at last minute, um, pick up my work and, and continue it on so that there's some continuity and flow, it's um, it's very, very important and it's going to help a lot. Um, so thank you. Thanks, Hayley. Congratulations. And very, very well deserved. And another uh, prize for which there could be a lot of winners and we have to find ways to support everybody I know who's in this, uh, in this circumstance. It's, a, it's obviously very tough in those, under those conditions. So I'm glad we can do something. And congratulations. Thank you. Um, and now to the last two awards. Now, these two awards are uh, the publication awards and they are captain's picks, okay? So you can't blame the committee. You can only blame me. Um, I do it deliberately. I mostly do it because it makes me have a good look at all 200 or so publications uh, that the Institute publishes. Beautifully available on our website um, that Gary Jamison puts together. Um, and thank you, Gary, for, for keeping us so up to date with the papers that have pretty much increased every year over the last decade, now up to um, 200 or so publications a year. And we split it into two, a public health uh, award and a biomedical uh, publication award. Um, and the other reason I do it, of course, is, is that, you know, honestly, I could choose so many. There could, you know, and it's just easier if I make a call, I guess, um, and not put, put a committee through what is basically an impossible task. So please, if you miss out, um, don't take it badly. The papers were, there's just so many high quality papers. And even on the, the publication award, I'm about to introduce the person who they're named after to say a few words, um, uh, but we have joint winners uh, this year. But before I do it, it's my pleasure to introduce Nick Crofts, um, Burnett legend, harm reduction legend who's had a very big influence, as I said earlier, on um, the, not just technical nature of what the Burnett does, but the, our, our, our culture. And um, as I think, you know, you heard from a number of people, but particularly Shelley, how this lives on in the Institute very deeply um, to today. And so it's great to have uh, Nick here, a champion, um, as I say, of harm reduction, but of science in harm reduction, and then that being applied, as Shelley said, to, to policy change. Um, and, and, and Nick most definitely does not stop at, uh, at, at, the, at the piece of evidence. He fights like crazy to um, ha have change implemented in very tough spaces. So Nick, with, with, it's great pleasure to welcome you back and, and over to you to say a few words before I announce the winners. That's very nice. Thank you very much, Brendan. That was that was really lovely. I, it is really lovely to be, be back here. I haven't had much to do with the Burnett over the last few years because I've been overseas. Um, it, it, it's one of the great um, pleasures of my life, actually, to come back and see all, all the people that uh, have been so much part of my life. I wanted to um, reminisce a little bit. I can't reminisce too much because my memory is not all that good, but um, I think that uh, David will correct me. I think that David preceded me, but I think I'm probably the longest uh, association with Burnett aside from David. Is that right, David? Uh, I think you might just about tie with Gilda, actually. And, and uh, I think we were preceded by Scotty uh, Bowden and a, a couple of others, but Scott and Suzanne and I all the same time. Okay, okay. Um, and it's it's daunting to think how long ago that was. And I'm really glad that we've already remembered some of the people who've contributed to what Burnett is now. And I want to do the same thing. Um, I'm really pleased about these awards, Brendan. That's just magnificent that, that people do get remembered. But there are some others. Um, Sue Crockett, Mike, said about uh, Sue. Uh, Sue is one of the shining stars of my entire life. Uh, I worked at Collingwood Community Health Centre for about 12 years and Sue joined 
after I'd been there for a few years. Mike worked there too from time to time, didn't you? Um, didn't you? You were along there all the time. Oh, it was community <laughs> boards. Uh, community it just boards, might have been fr Friday night drinks. I see. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, and Sue worked there, and then I moved to Burnett. And well, I moved to Fairfield first, and then I moved to Burnett. And uh, after a few years, Sue joined me there, and I accused her of stalking me. <laughs> um, she was a most uh, extraordinary person, and somebody who contributed so much to the ethos of the place. And a couple of others that I don't think anyone else on the call would probably know all that well, but Jimmy Dorigy and Aaron Peak were two of the most uh, humane uh, and, and uh, I, I can only think of them uh, teaching me so much about how you put human rights in public health and uh, how really at the, at the bottom of everything that we do, human rights is, is, is what drives and determine, determines what, uh, what we're trying to do. Jimmy and, and, um, and Aaron are both not with us, but um, they're two people who really contributed to, to the makeup of the, the organisation. Ian Gust, uh, I don't think Ian knew what he was doing when he hired me to start uh, an, an international public health section to the Burnett. Um, I certainly think that we went off in different directions from what Ian was expecting, but <laughs> I, I will say that uh, my great gratitude to Ian for years to support us, even if he didn't really understand or know what we were trying to do, he gave us all the support in the world. And um, Ian, Ian was the, 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 the Burnett, uh, you know, pure and simple. It was his driving vision. It was, um, Tim, I, I remember Jeff's uh, um, uh, propensity for travel. I met him uh, going to Delhi once. He was off to a meeting of the interparliamentary group that he was very much uh, part of, very active in. And uh, he got me into the into the lounge and and uh, shouted me drinks. So I remember him very, <laughs> uh, very kindly. Um, but from those little things, big things grow. And I just wanted to to show a little bit of the genealogy of the place that Ian hired me. Um, uh, I knew nothing about international health at that stage. I was very much a community health doctor and and um, looking to establish a research career. And I got on board Rob Moody, who is another one of mm. the determining features of the of the growth of the of the Burnett. And uh, Rob brought along a um, bloke named Mike Toole, who uh, just raised the whole level of the, the international health uh, enterprise to, to a, a, a degree that's, you know, that's, that's beyond, um, well, certainly it was beyond my, my understanding at the time. I have to say, I've been back in Australia for a few months and uh, even, even living in Amsterdam, I was aware that there are a number of Burnett media superstars, Brendan being one and Mike being the other. And, and, Everywhere I looked, I saw Mike Toole being the expert. <laughs> uh, congratulations right. on that. And then Robert Power has taken on uh, those mantles and, and, and uh, pushed the International Health Program even, even further. Um, it's an extraordinary institute. Uh, it, it really is an extraordinary institute. And I've worked in many places around the world, and I don't know anything else like the Burnett. And I'm really pleased to have had something to do with it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Such a great honour to have you here and uh, and to hear that history, um, and, and it is those those days of Ian, of Nick and Rob and Mike, and David and Gilda, and Suzanne um, is is you know the genesis of that unique element that came right back from then, um, and, and it's you know I came to the net thirteen years ago because it was already there, um, you know, and, and I saw myself as um, as trying to nurture this special thing that you'd all you'd all created um, to, certainly none of it's come from me um, it gave me uh, you know it is the secret source of of the institute so thanks so much for being here and um, we've got dual winners of the uh, Nick Crofts public health publication prize of the many uh, that we that I could have given and and the two winners are not in the bloodborne viruses, but about the four runners up were. So, so um, for this year, it's it's not um, bloodborne viruses, drugs, alcohol, or um, uh, behaviour, but uh, but one in maternal and child health and one in malaria. It's my pleasure to announce the dual winners. The first paper is from um, Alyssa Kennedy and Pete as a party and their groups. Um, and it's gender inequalities in health and well-being across the first two decades of life 
an analysis of 40 low income and middle income countries in the Asia Pacific region, published in Lancet Global Health and made a very big impact at the time. And we'll continue to, um, I hope Alyssa or Pete is online to tell us a little bit about this first of the Crofts Publication Award winners. Congratulations to you and the team. Thank you, I'm, I'm online. Oh, Alyssa, Alyssa encouraged me to, to join this meeting. Um, Truly honoured, seriously, truly honoured. Um, so thank you, and, and thanks, Nick, as well, to for, for your words as well. Um, can I reflect more, actually, on what enabled this work sure. and, and really what's special about the Burnett Institute? Um, this was a really crazy piece of work to take on, I think. We partnered with 40 countries, uh, with UN agencies. We had hundreds of stakeholders, um, and we accessed, you know, all their data sets um, and worked with them to analyse that to understand where gender inequalities first emerge. Um, I don't think we could have done this at any other place. Um, and I just really wanted to, um, you know, really pay, pay tribute to the people that work behind the scenes, um, particularly Jeff Drink and, and Brendan Allen, who helped sort out all the contracting with all the UN partners, um, and particularly to Gary and to Twee, who work in our finance department, who really helped ensure that, um, you know, the, the money flowed where it needed to. Um, it is a really important piece of work. It came at a time um, when the Lancet launched their gender um, series. Um, and they really hadn't paid any attention at all to children and adolescents. Um, so this is really helping UNICEF think about where they can um, target their policy and action. Thank you. It's really, really exciting. Thanks, Pete. That's fantastic. And, uh, and congratulations to the whole team. There's a list of um, uh, quite a large number of authors from, from the Institute, but also from, from uh, outside. And uh, please congratulate them all on, um, on our behalf. And the... The equal winner of the Nick Crofts Publication, Public Health Publication Award um, goes to Freya Folks and Paul Aegis and their team for the evaluation of the effectiveness of trop topical repellent distributed by Village Health Volunteer Networks against plasmodium uh, infection in Myanmar, a stepped wedge cluster randomised trial. Uh, this work is very special to me for a number of reasons. Um, it's a great uh, paper published in PLOS Medicine, very high um, ranking uh, journal. Um, an important finding, uh, finding that surprised us actually. I thought that um, repellents were going to not be any good and we could get on with test and treat programs and bed nets, but it turns out repellents um, work actually quite well against malaria. But it was also the first of the really serious um, research studies uh, done, you know, in PNG, really pioneered by, in PNG, sorry, in Myanmar, really pioneered by, by our Myanmar team. And, and so I'll ask uh, Freya or Paul if they're online to tell us a bit about that in a, in a, in a moment. But um, that was driving a transformation of that team to still be on this nexus of international development, but also of research and just, just practical things like um, uh, relationships with ethics committees and, and, uh, and you know, making sure we could do uh, good science in Myanmar in the same way as we'd done good international development for so many years before that, and then to bring those elements together. So it's fantastic to get such a good paper out of it, such a good um, advance in our understanding out of it, uh, but also at the, as, uh, as the legacy of which is very strong research base. Every one of our programs in Myanmar now has a research base to it. Um, and that's quite a transformation and a credit to everyone involved. So congratulations to, to Freya and to Pete and to all of the team, Julia, Winhanu, um, there's a big list, Catherine, uh, again. Uh, I hope someone is online, Freya, yeah. Paul. We're here. <laughs> Hi to you both, congratulations. Thank um, okay, thank you. Yes, we're um, very honoured to um, receive the publication award and I think I want to kind of echo what Pete was saying in terms of Burnett being the place to be to do this type of work and I'm very proud that in terms of the author list we got there, we got people here from every single discipline um, yeah. listed there, which is fantastic to see. So um, as Brendan said, you know, there wasn't much evidence for using repellent and basically Burnett had given a grant to roll out various malaria interventions to around 30,000 um, people. So what we thought we'd do is we'd kind of layer a research question on top of that, um, that on top of that rollout to really evaluate some of the interventions being rolled out. And one of them was insect repellent. And we found that repellent prevented about a third of malaria infections, which is fantastic. 
Now, this paper is actually considered some of the highest evidence now for the use of repellents to prevent malaria. And um, Wen Hanu and Julia have been doing a really, really good job really advocating with WHO to um, have this um, intervention included in um, WHO policy. So I want to thank them for their contribution. And I also want to thank, um, as Brenda mentioned, all the other kind of co-authors from Burnet Institute, both um, past and present, for um, contributing to that work. So that's Paul, Julia, Wen Hanu, Catherine, been through this year, um, Alyssa, um, Wen Tyke, Brendan, James, and Nanki as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and congratulations, Paul. I can see it there in the side. Beautiful work. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Brendan. Yeah, I just want to echo what Maya said. It was a, I was very fortunate to, to be in a position to be able to lead the publication of, 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 of this work. Um, and it was yeah, a fantastic team effort from, um, from everybody involved, Freya's team here in Melbourne, and obviously the, you know, the team in Myanmar in terms of implementation and also the, uh, their input in terms of you know, understanding the, 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 the findings that my typical analyses um, built so um, and also the input from our external collaborators as well um, so it's a fantastic study um, and a real pleasure to be able to lead it and um, great data and yeah really nice analysis as well it took took quite a lot of work um, it's a huge study yep mm -hmm. but um, fantastic and, it, and it was great to have such a such um, impact in terms of the findings Thank you, Paul Freya. Congratulations, and uh, what a what a legacy that work is. Congratulations to the whole Myanmar team, who um, uh, did just amazing work to have that happen, um, and uh, and you know give us this this base to do much more into the future. Um, so and thank you, Nick. So they're the two um, uh, public health uh, uh, awards, and the final, last but definitely not least award is the Biomedical Research Publication Award. And, um, and again, there was pretty much 100 papers in this category. Uh, and I have chosen just uh, one um, with some a number of very notable runners up and I'll talk to those people uh, uh, privately. But this one's very uh, topical. Um, it was published in, in PNAS, one of the world's best um, places to publish biomedical research and uh, any research, in fact. Um, it's on uh, viruses in bats. Now, uh, who would have thought viruses from bats would uh, be topical for the world? But of course, they're incredibly topical for the world um, and viruses of animals more, more generally. Um, but there's, a, there's an even more interesting part to this, the story of infectious retroviruses circulating in Australian bats. Um, and, and my pleasure to, to um, congratulate uh, Gilda Tetejan and her team, and of course, Josh Hayward, who's the first author, um, Gilda's twin sister, Mary, who's the uh, second author on this paper, and, uh, and a huge group of collaborators, both from the, from the Burnett and uh, CSIRO and, ex and elsewhere. Um, I hope Gilda or Josh is online to, to be congratulated and to tell us about it. Yeah, we're here. I'll, probably, I'll start Brenda. then I'll hand over to Josh because I'm sure Josh would like to say some things. Thanks so much, um, Brenda. It means a huge amount to, to be uh, awarded uh, this award. Um, so this was a study, I guess, um, that started off by serendipity in a way. Many, many years ago, um, I was uh, collaborating with my sister and I've got a clone. So she looks like me. I've got a twin and she's at CSIRO. And uh, we were thinking about, you know, do, do bats um, carry retroviruses? And we were looking at retroviruses, which, you know, everyone probably knows HIV is a retrovirus. And so the question was, do, do bats carry retroviruses? And along that, around that time, um, Josh Haywood um, knocked on my door and wanted to do a, uh, a PhD with me. And I tried to get rid of him. I said, you know, why do you want to do a PhD with me? You're already doing a PhD with somebody else. So he, was, he already started and was doing structural biology, but he didn't like that topic and uh, he preferred to do virology and he came to me and um, he convinced me to take him on. So around that time, uh, we were looking at the endogenous retro, uh, retroviruses in bats. So um, retroviruses, in fact, invade our genome. And, um, and then we have the remnants of retroviruses in our genome. And a little fact I love to, to tell people is that in humans, 8% of our DNA is actually from retroviruses. So we started doing similar studies in bats and um, Josh came along and he did some wonderful work in that area. 
um, showing that bats have a variety of different retroviruses or fossil records in their genome. And then my sister was doing um, a study with, she was working with Linfar Wang, and when they were looking at bat poo, so bat feces, and um, she did this um, high-end um, sequencing analysis to see what was there, what sort of sequences of viruses within that sample. And they were looking for paramyxoviruses, so hendroviruses, that sort of thing. And they didn't find that. But what they found was a retroviral sequence. And Linfa said, oh, go to your sister. She's a retrovirologist. Go work with her and figure this out. And so we looked at this sequence. We thought, wow, this is very similar to a koala retrovirus sequence that, uh, or virus that's circulating in koalas and it's endogenizing virus, um, koalas, koalas in real time. And, and then we did extra work to try and get that full, full sequence. And then with um, retrovirus, it's really cool. You can, you can engineer, this is gain, on fun, gain of function, I guess, engineer the whole sequence um, and then put it into cells and see if you can get an infectious virus. And so Josh and Mary put it together and I sort of was trying to dampen expectations. And I said, you know what, Josh, don't be, don't be too disappointed if we don't get a, a, a lot infectious virus from, from this clone. Okay, all right, so then we, uh, we got the clone and Josh did the experiment and there was virus being produced. And it was really exciting because this is the first time that anyone had discovered uh, a retrovirus that was uh, replication competent, if you like, in bats. Because all the other work that was done, and mostly by our lab, were, the, were basically that the, that the retroviruses were, were dead, their fossil records. And so we went on to characterise that and I might pass it on. But this is one of the most exciting pieces of work I've been involved in. Um, someone on Twitter said um, that we were working on uh, retroviruses in bats, but also the host cell factors in bats, because the other thing about bats is they carry these emerging viruses without having any clinical symptoms. And the other part of the work that we were doing, that was part of Josh's PhD, was looking at these um, host cell factors that are the vanguard of the immune system and uh, and characterising those. And someone on Twitter said, well, we were working on that before anyone else thought it was fashionable. So I thought that was really good, great kudos. But um, a really exciting um, discovery and really proud of it. And it was something that took years in the making as well. Like we started off about 10 years ago or something like that and finally got there on a smell of a willy rag. <laughs> uh, but serendipity is a wonderful thing and yeah. most of the exciting work that I've done is, is by luck and serendipity. So I'll hand it over to Josh because I'm sure he'll want to say a few words as well. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> thanks Gilda. Yeah, Josh. Th thanks, Gilda. Thanks for putting up with me for the uh, the last 10 years or nearly 10 years that we've been at this game. And uh, thanks, Captain Brendan. What a, what a, what a big honour and a surprise uh, to, to, to receive this, this award. Um, I'd say an extra special thanks to my actually co-first author, uh, Mary, uh, Gilda's sister. And uh, yeah, just want to you know reiterate, it's, it, it's not just us, you know, it's a, it was a huge team effort. There were so many authors on this paper and it was a really a large group of collaborators that got together to finally you know, get this study over the line. And uh, what, a, what, a, what a great study it, it ended up being and, uh, you know, fantastic publication. So um, also I want to give an extra special shout out to the Burnett funding team and our private donors who have been keeping this work going we we haven't had a lot of um you know government funding for this this work so uh a lot of that's come from you know from the special private donors that uh the burnett's been able to to get on board with this so thanks to them and thanks to everybody at the burnett for for you know coming along for this ride with us so yeah thanks friend thanks to you both and before i let you go i'm going to ask you to just explain the endogenizing comment you made gilda so this is um you know, in the in the koala, you know, they mentioned that a lot of our, our DNA is ancestrally retrovirus, and and of course, koalas are of very special interest. But this particular koala one, as I understand it, is both an infectious virus, but also transmitted in the germline. Have I got that right? That's yeah, right. that's yeah. So the koala retrovirus is an amazing example of um, endogenization in real time. So. Um, Maybe Josh could explain, but um, yeah. So normally, if you look at endogenous retrovirus, um, everyone, all the species, will have that endogenous retrovirus. But in the koalas, it, it, the, the, the virus is actually infecting these koalas and then infecting and establishing itself in the germ cell line. And then when those koalas reproduce, and the babies will have um, that endogenized retrovirus 
and then pass it on to their offsprings and so on and so forth. But this is happening in real time. That means that not all the koalas actually are infected and are are endogenized uh, with the koala retrovirus. And um, it's happening all in in Queensland and then it's it's spreading down um, to the southern states. So it's really fascinating um, to see this happening um, in real time, as they say. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, incredible. No, I just thought that was worth explaining. So thank you. Fabulous work. Congratulations to all the winners. Sorry I've gone so over. Um, thanks, Josh and Gilda. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, all the visitors. Thank you all for um, being here and you know, striking the right turn on a really tough um, uh, period for everybody I know. It's Friday afternoon. What can we do but um, at least treat it like a Friday afternoon as best as we can Um very prestigious awards to so those who didn't miss out. Don't be dis- who missed out. Um, don't be disheartened. Uh, uh, please put your hand up again next time around. It's part of the part of the process, and we wouldn't have good papers winning if we didn't have lots of good papers that weren't winning. And uh, and, and 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 sorry, good good people and papers um, who who weren't winning. So congratulations to the winners. And uh, and and um, I am feeling everybody's pain at the moment um, and trying to um, be as positive as I can in, in a time that I'm, I guess, like all of us, finding really tough. Uh, so, but today is great therapy for me and I hope for, for all of you. So look forward to, uh, to next week and each week at the Institute that I love to um, be at as much as Nick loved to be there uh, 30 years ago. Thanks everybody and, and uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye.